Kali Masi, we're super psyched to have you guys. You guys sound wonderful. Thank you. Uh, so I did want to ask you, what gear would each of you consider to be essential to your sound? Uh, a really nice snare drum for me as yeah. the drummer. Nice. Um, I think that a uh, good bass distortion is like essential. I think not enough uh, distortion is used on instruments other than guitar. Yeah. Do you have a favorite? I actually, uh, yeah, I use um, the built-in distortion on my dark glass head, and it sounds amazing. Love it. Uh, I'm gonna say overdrive as well. Uh, just a versatile overdrive that you can use to boost a guitar. You can use it to get really gnarly with it. Um, yeah, that's that's my essential. That's- I feel like I'm still trying to figure out so much of my gear, so I'm just going to have to go with my er Ernie Ball Music Man Valentine because it just is very nice to play. So at least I have that taken care of, and then I can figure out the sounds later. Very nice. Uh, Was there a lot of trial and error in finding the kind of gear that y'all wanted to get the sound that you were looking for? I've had the same bass the whole time, and I haven't done any mods to it or anything like that, which is kind of out of character for me but that dimension bass sounds i just think it sounds great i think it's totally underutilized um and uh yeah as far as like amps and so we've just had kind of bad luck with gear over the last couple of years with like uh uh our practice bass flooding last year and i've just had a lot of bass gear kind of crap out and it's really you know but um i'm pretty happy with the way things are right now i think so but it was yeah it took a while to get to get there i think that's kind of true of every musician though i don't think you ever really stop tweaking and messing around with gear because it's fun yeah i i think trial and error is kind of like the name of the game like been just cycling out pedals constantly and like uh always (laughs) i think that people don't talk about how stressful like effects can be especially in like the golden era of effects right now it's like there's this whole world out there and everything sounds really great and then you have like a thousand pedals at your feet and that is really stressful and then trying to consolidate and then wanting more and less and more and less um i'm always swapping stuff out and there's really like for a pretty straightforward like punk rock band having a ton of effects can feel really superfluous but uh yeah, I like to have a couple of different sounds that I can dip into and a couple of weird things that I can play with because at the end of the day, you're making art, so you want to have like weird colors sometimes and weird, cool, fun, fun different stuff. So, yeah. So-
would you say are your biggest influences and have they played a part in the gear that you've purchased? I feel like there hasn't been like a gear person that's influenced me since I was like a teenager and listening to like Tool and like, like how does Justin Chancellor get his tones? Like, um, so I feel like I chased some pedals at that time, like a Digitech bass whammy or like a BF3 uh, boss flanger. Um, but like since then it's more been like, yeah, what sounds and feels cool. And I mean, I'm lucky to have been able to like play really cool stuff. The matchless stuff like i don't really think i was super aware of like how i don't know renowned they were when i first like stumbled into uh them and uh my guitar shop back home then you just like plug into them and you're like oh this is really cool i will say that i saw a band called the hotelier play a show and chris hoffman the guitarist was using a science head and i was like right in the line of fire of it and i was like thought it sounded incredible and their guitar tones on the records um sound awesome too so i shot him a message to ask about it and he gave me some info and when we were on tour out in the west coast we hit up alex from science and um he let us come over to his house and play a bunch of his amps and um that was someone that i took a ton of influence from um in making a gear decision and i love that head it's uh it's great and alex is a sweetheart so um love that changing stuff out on your on your gear and whatnot specifically sam can you tell me about the costello jazz master yeah i actually i bought that for the store and it was like dead stock yeah and um 
I, I mean, I love what you've done with it. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I've, I've like just mutilated that guitar and I encourage everyone to mutilate the stuff that they own because I think people forget that they own it. It's yours, so you should change it um, if you want to. But yeah, I, yeah, I bought it here, dead stock. I like Jazz Masters well enough and love them now, but at the time I was just like, that looks cool and that looks like the guitar that I want to play, which is a good place to start, I think, with gear, just like, loving how it looks even um and yeah so i i swapped out the pickups i got my hands on a loose pair of chicago specials somehow here and put those in it i've been through like lollers and stuff and loved all those but um changed those out i changed the pickup covers and replaced the pots and uh the neck uh the original (laughs) neck that uh was on it it was a little warped so i uh swapped that out with uh warmeth neck and slapped a water slide on there so no one would scream at me um but yeah i've done all sorts of and and put the mastery on it too mastery vibrato mastery bridge too so it's definitely uh not the same guitar that i bought yeah thank you guys so much for chatting and playing for us cheers and, man uh, Thanks for having us. yeah we'll look forward to seeing you again soon heck and yes sam i'll see you tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.